we're diving back in to some degree and the bookkeeping side of things, which always brings up that question when you're a tax preparer, how much bookkeeping do you want to be taking on? What's your network look like with regards to your cutoff between the bookkeeping you do and the tax preparation uh, that uh, you do? So we have to have some bookkeeping knowledge to do any kind of taxes, typically with regards to businesses, because we're at least going to have some variations in terms of the bookkeeping that were provided and the tax preparation that we do because of differences in the tax code versus normal bookkeeping, such as possibly using a mileage method for automobiles or something like that, or having to write off like the home office, uh, for example. We also have to make sure that we get the bookkeeping reported properly in terms of the method being used and accounting period in the first tax return and then it should be easier going forward from that point because it should be the same going forward from that point. All right, so an accounting method is a set of rules used to determine when and how income and expenses are reported. So obviously, when we think about those set of rules, from a bookkeeping standpoint, most accountants or like CPAs, for example, will first think of generally accepted accounting principles or rules that govern, for example, publicly traded companies, the primary rule being an accrual-based system. But remember, for taxes, we might use an accrual-based system, but we're basically beholden to the tax code. The tax code is the thing that is determining the ultimate rules with regards to tax reporting, which is probably going to get a lot of their information from the best practices of financial reporting, but also have some distinctions because of whatever the rules or whatever is trying to be done by the tax code. So your accounting method includes not only the overall method of accounting you use, but also the accounting treatment you use for any material item. When we're saying material item, we don't mean like matter here. We mean that it makes a difference to taxes, meaning the dollar, the dollar amount is not so small that it doesn't have a difference uh, in terms of decision making, for example. So you choose an accounting method for your business when you file your first income tax return that includes a Schedule C for the business. So like with the accounting period where we said, hey, if you want to be a calendar year, then or something other than a calendar year, make sure that you do that on the first tax return or else it's going to be difficult to change it. Same with the accounting method. You would like to get it right the first time. Uh, whatever method you're going to be used, cash method, or an accrual method or some hybrid between the two, you want to get it right the first time because consistency is a standard policy in accounting in general. And the tax code, of course, follows that kind of general uh, accounting principle as well. That doesn't mean that you cannot change methods after having filing the tax return, but you might have to request that you get permission in some cases or qualify to be able to change the method which is a tedious thing to do, something that you don't typically want to go through, so get it right the first time. So after that, if you want to change your accounting method, you must generally get IRS approval, see change in, method, in accounting method later.